Okay, early on I was getting a little bit irritated <laughs> and a little bit annoyed by the, the midday light. No. It's simply for latterly. It's simply for latterly. Det er jo ikke Jeg tror sgu ikke det her, vi kommer til at ske. And this changes everything. Now it's fun to shoot here again. In the beginning it was frustrating as fuck. <laughs> in this video you will follow me around here on the countryside in Denmark. Starting with noon light and then we're gonna move from noon light to golden hour. And you can see how it changes the photograph. In this video I took one of my favorite photographs that I've taken in a while. So in this video, we're going to talk about how we use the natural light to create the photographs that we want. There's a common misconception that only great light is golden hour. Like this 20 minutes of like soft, nice light. And that's great for portraits and all. But good light depends on what you want to do with your photographs. Today we're shooting with the Fuji X-T3 and a wide angle lens which is the 16mm 1.4 and then I also have a portrait lens with us which is the 56mm 1.2 so we can switch between a portrait and a wide lens depending on the situation. And I put links in the description to all the gear. Here's some examples of photographs that, uh, that I all think are great and in different light. Here is a silhouette. This guy is standing in the shadowy area and his whole background is lit up. And then you can follow his shape and form and that makes for an interesting photograph. Right now we have some of the more trickier light, which is the light around noon that is just harsh and the shadows are harsh. Like if you look at this, it just cuts through. If you look at this photograph, you see I took up the two kits then it, it was an, kind of an overcast day and the skin tones are great and the shadows are less uh, harsh. And the same goes for this photograph where there's a girl dancing and two guys at the edge of the photograph. There's no harsh shadows as you, you see right here, like I have a harsh shadow here. And that's usually because the day was overcast and that's one of the more forgiving uh, times of the day to take a photograph because no matter what you do, you don't have to think much about the lighting itself. So it, it, it becomes easy mode. Another, like, another light condition is also night photography. Then there's no light. And that's tricky, both for the camera and for you. So then you have to look at neon lights, car lights, street lights, or if you are really like <laughs> desperate or if that's your style of photography, you can also use a flash on your camera. So for these three photographs you're seeing right now, those are photographs I took in Mexico and I used a built-in flash on a Ricoh GR2 to create some kind of light when I needed it. And here's another example at night where I photographed this woman you see here and she's backlit, which means the light comes from uh, the opposite side of where I am. So you get like a golden thing around her uh, shape and that's created with the street light and the car lights. So whatever you do, if you take photos at night, look for neon light, street lights, and whatever artificial light source you can get. This scenery that we're in right now is so different from the scenery that I'm comfortable and used to. Like, I, I like big cities and a lot of people. And right now we're in the countryside in Denmark. And the reason why we're here is because I'm writing my very first photo book. And that's gonna be uh, based on my four years in Mexico, where I bought my very first camera and with all the portraits and stories. I'm working on it right now and I can't wait to share it with you guys. Right now we have this noon light that is a photographer's nightmare because everything just gets so tricky. But what you're seeing right now is me standing in the shades. So I only get the reflection that lights my face up. And that works kind of like a, yeah, like a reflector, which makes the harsh light a lot more soft. And that's what we want.
by now we've been out taking photos for like half an hour and it's tricky because it doesn't come natural to me here. I don't know if it's the midday sun or is it this like just pretty scenery and landscape. So, so what I would ideally like to do is to finish this meal and then wait for the sun to set to get a better light and more moody photos. And these are our dogs, Jaus and Fia. Hey Jaus, come. So in this video and in the kind of uh, photographs that I would like to make here on the countryside, I like to make photographs. I didn't know I was a person making photographs. I thought I was taking pictures, but I'm taking pictures. Anyways, the photograph that I'm gonna take here, I would much rather have soft light here. Not because that's always the case. If you look at some of my street photography that you see right here, sometimes you can use this high noon light. If you want to play with the composition in terms of making shapes with the harsh light, Sometimes that's exactly what you want. In this case though, I can't wait for the sun to set because there's no shapes and forms I think would work here. Some golden soft light would be preferable, but we'll get that hopefully today. By looking inside someone's uh, ship or car or home, you kind of get an idea about who they are and yeah, it's kind of like a portrait without people in it. So I think there's a lot of potential by photographing. Oh, and there's a person in the boat as well. Oh. <laughs> It's so good to be back and like photographing details and personal items and so on compared to landscape. I'm really not that comfortable in landscape, but um, we're working on it. Something that's very difficult in photography about light and everything in light is just difficult. And the only way to learn it is to practice it and then take photos while paying attention to the light situation and take photos with intent. But what's also difficult is that the way that we see light with our eyes is not how our cameras see light. So the human eye sees a bigger spectrum of uh, f-stops. So we can see dark places and shadows while we can see the bright side as well. And the camera doesn't have the same dynamic range as our eyes. So that's why when you take your camera and you focus on the bright spot of a, an image, everything else gets dark. And when you focus on the dark spot of an image or the shadows, then the highlights or the brightness will blow out. So when we take photos with a camera, it's just important to remember that it does, it won't look the same as what our eyes sees. So you need to make sacrifices and you need to find out where you want to emphasize. <laughs> My last video with Cartier Person, I think it hit around 130,000 views so far. So thanks to everyone who have watched it already. And if you haven't watched it, I put a link to my whole series on how to take photos like in the description below. And in case you're wondering, my mom is on the camera right now, which is why there is this in front of the footage. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> and from the comments, I know that you guys appreciate it when she's the one doing the behind the scenes, so I shouldn't mess with her. Uh, yeah, make sure to check her out on Instagram, and I put her Instagram here, and she, and she also has a YouTube channel in Danish, in case you are interested. <laughs> or in that video about uh, Katja Person, I mentioned a photo book that I appreciate called The Decisive Moment. And I bought that book for around 100 bucks on Amazon. And after I posted the video, that book was, I think, 600 bucks. And I know it sounds a little bit nonchalant, just saying, oh yeah, just get this book. It's beautiful when it's seven, 600 bucks. That's insane. And you shouldn't pay that much for that book. Also for the people who want to go a bit deeper in natural light and in artificial light, there's one book that is the Bible of <laughs> lighting in photography. And I put the links in the description. So make sure to check it out. Right now we have a really nice sunlight, but in 10 minutes it's gonna get so much better and more purple and more yellow so uh, now we just came out and find out what the kind of photos we would like to take what you see behind me right now is a beautiful sunset but it's lit from the back which means 
I'm in the front of it and I'm a silhouette because there's not much light hitting my face. And then you create this like kind of like a glory of the hair called like the highlights. This is not the most stable bridge ever built, but it did the job. So I'm very lucky that there's no clouds blocking our sight. Sometimes it's easier here to use the manual focus because otherwise I'm gonna hit this weed things and it's just simpler just to adjust the focus manually. And nogle gange så kan det godt være, at man ikke rammer den første gang. Super, mange tak skal du have. Now we're gonna rush, we're gonna continue to a special place, not too far from here, and I'll show you guys what it is. We are almost here, I think I just ruined this. We're almost here, uh, we're gonna continue up these stairs. I've never been here myself, so I don't know much about it, so let's find out together. And we have the dogs with us still. Come sir. This is the place, and we are so far up. Try to take a look. That was a place called Moon's Clint, which is basically like a huge cliff. But this, the water was so dark blue, I don't know if you guys catch it, or if it's just me who sees it like that. My dog is tired, and we need to go. But uh, let's take a little more photos before we end this one. Okay, early on I was getting a little bit irritated <laughs> and a little bit annoyed by the, the midday light and this changes everything. Now it's fun to shoot here again. In the beginning it was frustrating as fuck. <laughs> but uh, now we're gonna take a little more photos before we end this photo walk. That's it for my video on how I use light when I'm outdoors and a little bit different here in the countryside in Denmark, but I hope you enjoy it. And next time we will be in France somewhere and I'll let you know when and where. But subscribe if you haven't and I'll see you soon.